So this is a core company interview preparation series video of uh, EC Electronics. So here we are going to see some more questions from embedded system subject. Uh, the part one video on embedded systems is already uploaded uh, into the playlist. Okay, so we are going to see some more questions from the embedded systems. Some more advanced level of questions you can actually expect in this video. Okay, the questions and answers you can actually see on the screen. Okay, so let us see the first question. The first question is significance of watchdog timer in embedded system so there is actually a lot of applications and uh, that is a lot of applications of watchdog timer not only in embedded system but in many systems okay so this watchdog timer is actually a timing device which is having a predefined timing interval and within uh, that is after the completion of this time interval it will reset the system to the initial condition okay to the original state so Consider that uh, there is some uh, unnecessary things happening uh, in between this time interval. So, there can be a system crash or something. So, in order to avoid this, what will happen after the ending of this time interval, the system will automatically reset to the original or the initial state. So, hence by uh, resetting of this uh, system with the help of the watchdog timer, the system crash and some failures can be avoided. Okay, so that is the purpose of the watchdog timer. The watchdog timer is a timing device. After the timing interval is completed, it will reset the system to the original or the initial state. Okay, so that is the function of a watchdog timer. Okay, next one. What is the job of a preprocessor, compiler, assembler and linker? Okay, so preprocessor is actually a system which will execute some commands before the code is given uh, to the processor. Before actual processing is done, the preprocessor will do some initial operations or initial processing. Okay, So that is the case of a preprocessor. Generally, some systems will be having a main processor and a preprocessor. And also there is a concept of coprocessor also. Okay, So uh, that is a preprocessor. Now, compiler is a uh, unit which is going to take your high level code and it will be converting the high level code to a machine understandable code that is a machine lang machine language that is ones and zeros okay so that is a function of a compiler next one assembler is actually a unit which is going to take the assembly language and convert that to machine language that is ones and zeros okay then last one is linker so uh, when we are executing some programs within the embedded systems or uh, within any systems for that matter there will be some predefined functions which are being used in uh, the programs okay so, in order to link these predefined programs with the defined library, that is, this predefined programs will be actually defined uh, in some libraries, right? So, in order to link these predefined programs, that is, in order to uh, find the actual meaning of this predefined programs, we have to link it with some library files. So, this linking process is actually executed with the help of a linker, okay? So, that is called a linker. Next question. How does combination of functions reduced memory requirements in embedded systems so that is how uh, when we combine uh, the functions how can the memory requirements be reduced okay so when the memory requirements that is when we are combining the code what will happen is that if there is some uh, redundant code or something then in that case the redundancy is eliminated and also the overhead is eliminated okay so, the main advantage is that the redundancy and overhead can be eliminated. When we are combining the code means there will be some common uh, functions which can be, we don't need to write it twice or we don't need to uh, redundantly write it. We can only keep one portion or one replica of the program. The other uh, things we can eliminate. Okay, so that is one advantage when we are combining the code. Okay. And also memory consumption, memory allocation uh, is uh, done efficiently. When codes are combined, we can efficiently allocate memory. So memory allocation overhead uh, is reduced and also redundancy is eliminated. These are the main advantages. Okay. Next one. What is the need of DMAC in ES? Here DMAC means direct memory access controller. Okay. So direct memory access means here without the intervention of the processor, if some memory transactions is done, that is actually called as direct memory access. I hope everyone knows about direct memory access. Actually, I have explained about this thing in the part one video of embedded system also. Okay, so direct memory access means uh, we are not actually 
making use of the processor or without intervention or without the assistance of processor directly memory transactions is taking place between uh, the memory unit and some io modules or some other units okay so here when we are using direct memory access controller means in that case the memory transaction is actually controlled with the help of this dmac not by the processor so if the processor is doing some other things consider that the processor is uh, busy with executing some programs in that case here the memory transaction doesn't have to wait memory transaction is still possible even when the processor is executing some other commands okay so here we are not making use of the processor assistance but directly with the help of a direct memory access controller we are making the memory transactions okay so that is a need of dmac uh, in embedded system in embedded systems also we can make use of this uh, dmac consider that uh, this system is having some uh, processor some coprocessor etc without the intervention of this processor preprocessor and all the dmac will actually control all the memory transactions okay next one explain interrupt latency and how can we decrease it okay so interrupt latency means the time when the interrupt request is raised and the time interval between the interrupt request is raised and it is processed that is how much time the interrupt is waiting to get processed once it is raising the request that is called interrupt latency so it is a time span an interrupt is generated and it is being serviced so it an interrupt is generated and the time it has to wait to get serviced that is called interrupt latency now how can it be reduced it can be reduced by uh, servicing the interrupts immediately by prioritizing the interrupts that is we know that there are various types of interrupts so these interrupts are actually some external things interrupts are generally uh, generated by the external hardwares or external modules so when this interrupt is generated if we actually predefined the uh, the priority levels of the interrupts that can possibly occur in the system we can prioritize the interrupts and hence we can process the interrupt based on this priority and hence by prioritizing we can reducing reduce the latency okay then another thing is that uh, interrupt service routines isr has to be simple and short so while defining the interrupt service routine when we are uh, writing the routine or uh, the program which is uh, going to the service the interrupt there is a interrupt service routine okay so when we are defining the isr it has to be short and simple okay so these type of things we can adopt uh, and also we can if you want we can mask some uh, unwanted interrupts so that the other interrupts the other uh, important interrupts will get priority okay so these type of things we can do to avoid or to reduce the interrupt latency okay next question why is java most commonly used in embedded system so java is one of the uh, system one of the programming languages which is mainly designed uh, so that it can work on multiple platforms without uh, any change it is without uh, making any change to the code it will work perfectly on multiple platforms okay so when we are using java for writing the code of embedded systems even if we are making some uh, changes in the platforms we don't have to go for the code change okay so the code will work perfectly if the jvm that is java virtual machine is installed to that platform okay so that is one feature java is actually defined as write once and run anywhere okay so we don't need to uh, make any code changes we can actually reuse the the previous or the old old code into the new platform okay even if we are changing the platform we don't have to uh, rewrite the code okay so that is the main advantage of going with uh, java okay so again another features are also there with java that is exception handling it is having simple syntax then automatic garbage collection all these things are actually very suitable to make uh, java uh, suitable for embedded systems okay so that is a important thing we have to take into consideration these are the merits of java okay next one if you buy some rtos that is real time operating systems what are the features you look for in that is what are the things which we have to look 
when we are buying some real time operating systems okay so real time operating systems if you don't know anything about rtos it is actually uh, the operating systems in which the time is given most uh, most importance that is time is important than accuracy so there will be some deadlines for every programs or every task and every task has to complete within that deadline that is the most important things for thing for rtos whereas for the case of other operating systems like windows we are uh, considering accuracy as a most important factor whereas rtos takes uh, the deadline or the time bound as a most important factor it has to be met at any case the deadline has to be met at any case okay so when we are going to buy the rtos we have to actually look the conditions like or the features like it has to be deterministic deterministic operating systems has to be uh like it will give a certain level of output or a precision in any case so it has to be deterministic then context switching time interrupt latency these things has to be very less okay interrupt latency should be very less then context switching times should be very uh, very less then compatibility with several plugin devices we know that for embedded systems various systems will be actually incorporated into a single unit and in that case the compatibility should be there it should be reliable overall then all these things are uh, there uh, they have written that interrupt response time should be very minute yeah interrupt it response that is whenever the an interrupt is generated uh, by an external module it has to be serviced at the fastest so interrupt service time or interrupt latency has to be minimum okay so these things you have to be uh, taken into consideration while choosing an rtos and also we have to uh, think that for which application or which type of embedded system we are actually going for uh, the selection of this rtos if it is uh, a very critical one we have to go for hard real time operating system then if it is a, a little bit flexible one plus flexible embedded system it is then we can go for the soft um, uh, soft real time operating system okay hard real time operating system means uh, if the deadline is missed then some very critical things or some catastrophic uh, destruction will be happening then it is called a hard real time operating system now the soft real time operating systems are systems in which when the deadline is missed only the performance is degraded there is no serious damage happening to the system okay so again we have to uh, consider that for which application or for which embedded system we are actually going to choose the rtos okay likewise we have to make the decision anyways it has to be deterministic latency should be very less and it should be giving good output okay so these are the things which you have to consider while going for selection of a real time operating system okay so in this video we have actually discussed some more application level type of questions from embedded system the basic questions you can actually find in the part 1 video okay so if you are uh, very new to the concept or the interview uh, area of embedded systems please uh, watch the part 1 okay only then uh, watch this part okay so anyway i am really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching